I'm so excited to be chatting today about hormones and the hormone gut connection with the lovely Amanda from Healing Hormones RD. Um, I've been just like perusing through her Instagram page this morning because it's so full of information and that's actually how I found her just kind of like cruising through Instagram looking for hormone stuff because that's what we're doing with um, the inner circle for gut recharge right now and um, stumbled upon her page and I was like oh, I need to interview you on on this on everything and I think she just popped in here so I'll have her join in a second let's see is it popping up there we go view Yay! Let's see. Hi! Hello, it worked. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excited to chat. Me too. Me too. I was just saying how like when I was, because right now in my inner circle for my gut recharge students, it was all about um, hormone health for this month. And that's how I kind of stumbled across your page is looking for hormones. And I was like, oh my goodness, everything you're teaching just resonates so much. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how's your mood going? Well, it's good. You can kind of <laughs> see some boxes back here. Where it's, it's it's late here, so it's dark. So my lighting's yeah. a little weird. Sorry about that, everyone. But no. yeah, we're we're definitely more settled. So life nice. is good. Nice. All right. Well, I'll just do a quick little intro and then jump in with some questions. Um. Okay. So for those of you that are new to happy hour, any of that stuff, usually they're at um, a little bit later than this, but doing, <laughs> doing it at eight today, because um, all the time zones. Uh, my name is Laura Martin. I am the creator and founder of Healing to Happy, where I help people that suffer from IBS and anxiety to heal using nutrition. Um, and it wasn't too long ago that I struggled with hormones, lost my period for five years, had horrible like skin flares all over my body, which is why I was diving into this whole rabbit hole of hormones just to learn more about it um and i stumbled across amanda's profile and like i said earlier it's just so full of valuable information like practical information and that's who i like to jump on these calls with is people that you know you can go on i don't know pubmed and all these kind of things and it's just like so freaking overwhelming that you don't know what yeah, to do yeah or you go to the doctor and they tell you like you have to eliminate everything that you do by the way like here you go and then you're just like stressed out and you don't know the next right move so you don't make a move um, so I like to jump on here with people that give practical, realistic solutions and how you can obtain these things in your real life without feeling overwhelmed so that it does become a lifestyle choice. And that's something when I was even just like looking through your website, I wrote down something where it was like, by learning how your body works and what it needs to function optimally, you can empower yourself to achieve lifelong hormone healing. And I was like, yes, but it's like stars. I'm like, I love this. Oh, oh, did it go in? There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Amanda oh, is you froze a women's... for a second. Oh no! Sorry. <laughs> Am I? Good? You were frozen for a second. I'm guessing I was frozen. Oh, no. dang it! Um, but yeah, so uh, Amanda is a women's health dietitian, helping people with hormones, get rocking hormones, have um, painless periods, and all that kind of stuff. Because I know a lot of us, there's that difference between something that is normal and something that is common and getting that confused. So I'm excited to jump in today. If you want, you can introduce yourself to everyone that's tuning in. <laughs> yes. So women's health dietitian, I'm Amanda Montalvo. Um, I really kind of got started with all this stuff because I came off the pill. So, and I didn't, I didn't know that it was going to be like this awful experience. So I just like kind of stopped it. And then I had all these issues and I was originally studying nutrition for athletes. And I was like, I'm going to do sports nutrition. I was really big into CrossFit at the time. I rode at UConn. And then I had all these crazy issues. I lost my period. I've always had bad acne, but it got way worse. I had thyroid issues. And I was like, no one could help me. I was like, this is insane. That This should not. I, sh I should be able to go to the doctor and at least have someone give me a solution. Whereas they just kind of told me to go back on the pill. So that's when I was like, I have to learn more about this. And I pretty much learned everything I possibly could so I could heal my hormones for good. Um, but yeah, so that's what I help women do. Lots of, I have lots of clients with PCOS, endometriosis, women coming off the pill, or just like painful, heavy periods, and they don't feel like themselves. So that's kind of what I'm all about. 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of that resonates because same thing with me was coming off the pill is how I ended up losing my period for five years. And I was running that like fitness rat race. Like I was like, oh, I want the abs. I want all this kind of stuff. Like, no, this is a sign that when you don't have a period, something is off. But at the time, I was 22. I thought it was fun. I was like, oh, I don't want that thing anyways. Like, that's annoying. Yeah. And then as I'm getting older, thinking of having babies, I'm like doing that. I'm like, oh, no, that, that's a huge red flag. So how did you kind of work through that? Because I know a lot of people when they're either losing weight or they're trying to heal some kind of thing, they're chasing that rat race, that health cycle thing, but they're not listening to those cues. So how is that for you? Like coming from CrossFit, coming from that kind of background, and even though those things are healthy, like how was it that your body was signaling to you and all that kind of stuff? Like when I always had a regular cycle. So when it was gone, that was my first thing. Like, even though I didn't enjoy my period, I was like, I should have this. And I, we do learn some stuff in dietetic school on the female cycle, not a ton. Um, but I did know like, oh, so I'm not producing hormones. Like that thought crossed my mind. And I was like, okay, so this isn't good. I need to make hormones. And I was, I got off the pill because I was feeling depressed and not like myself. And I was like, I did some research and I found out that could be from the pill. So I was like, let me try to just come off. So that's when, like, I just had all these signs of like not having a period. I felt insane. I had insane mood swings. Um, I knew that deep down something was wrong. So like my issue was that I was just going to like doctor after doctor and they were telling me that I was fine. And I was like, I'm for sure not fine. I swear. <laughs> it's like, there's something deeper going on. And so that's kind of the race I was, I was kind of in this race of trying to find someone to heal me versus looking more inward. I'm like, okay, well, what am I doing on a day-to-day -day basis? What can I do with my food, with my exercise to help support getting my period back? Um, and then, you know, for me, like my skin, like whenever I'm super stressed or, you know, like not taking care of myself, it's the first thing that shows up and not having the pill to mask a lot of my issues. I had, my skin was insane. I just, it had never been that bad before. And that's when I was like, okay, it really forced me to take a look at everything. Um, but yeah, those are probably like my big things that I was kind of like chasing symptoms, trying to fix them the whole time. Yeah. How long were you on the pill? I was on it for seven years. Okay. And then all of a sudden it just started to take a turn? Like, I think so. I, I it's it's still hard to know. I mean, I was in college and I was super stressed. So I think like being on it for so long and I didn't take any supplements. Like I didn't know that I was depleting all those nutrients. Um, and it does impact your gut bacteria. So I'm thinking like via the nutrient deficiencies and gut bacteria and just like so much stress that it was just kind of like the perfect storm that it just didn't work for me anymore. Yeah, that's kind of like the same thing because I had that implant on like horrible horrible oh and they don't tell you that <laughs> the whole mess that it does but like looking back on that it's just you think you're crazy and then you actually realize that aligns when you switched your birth control or went on something else you're like oh that was my brain and my body doing this funky little dance that was like hey nothing like this isn't working and that's like when anxiety spiked up and like depression and all these crazy things started to happen but we often don't answer that call we suppress it with more supplements so, like, what was it to you that you took a different route? Do you think it was because you were studying nutrition that you were like, okay, I'm not going to try and, I don't know, get SSRIs or something like that? Like, you're like, oh, this is my birth control. Yeah, I think that because, like, the whole reason why I started to question the birth control was because I wasn't feeling like myself. And then when I was in school, we do, we do learn about the nutrient deficiency because it's nutrition, right? So we learn all about different medications, deficiencies, and the imbalances they create. And so when I read that, I was like, what? Like, I've been taking this for seven years and I didn't, I'm not taking any of these nutrients. So I was instantly like mad. And then I was like, I talked to my doctor about it and she's like, you're fine. You're fine. And I'm like, could this be why I, I'm feeling like depressed and not like myself? And, you know, she's like, no, no, there's no research to show that. But then I found a ton of research. Yeah. But yeah, that was kind of like, my first inkling. So that's what I focused on was the nutrition. Cause I was like, okay, well, if, if I know I'm depleted in these most likely because I've been taking this for so long, then that's what I'll focus on first. Yeah. And that makes sense. So nutrition was your first step. Yeah. Of like I, was, I was also like, I think in the CrossFit space, like I learned about paleo. And so mm -hmm. I, that was my first introduction into more like functional nutrition type 
stuff. And so that's when I started eating more whole foods, but paying more attention to those things. And I was like, if I'm living this holistic lifestyle through like fitness and nutrition, like why am I taking a pill every day? So I think that too kind of elicited like that same thought pattern. So if someone was say taking the pill right now, what are kind of some practical steps that they can start coming off of it or just looking at alternatives? Maybe they still stay on it, but adding in these kind of nutrients, what do those look like? I would say like number one, like take a magnesium supplement. Talk to your doctor, obviously, but it, the pill depletes magnesium. And that is the one thing that I think pretty much everyone should take. Um, and so I would definitely consider that. And then looking at like, do you have something that's replacing a lot of the foods or the nutrients that are being depleted? Like if you like a lot of them are B12, B vitamins, copper, selenium, zinc, uh, magnesium, vitamin C, if you, if I'm thinking, you know, like in my mind, I was like, oh, like liver, liver meets like the needs of most of those things. And so if like, you could take like a liver supplement or eat beef liver, like once a week or something like that. Um, that's a really easy way to like replace those nutrients. That's, I would start looking at that and like, where can I get more of this stuff from my food? Um, whether you're going to keep taking it or come off, if you're going to come off, you really need to be cognizant of like okay I really need to be actively replacing these that's why when they tell you like to take a prenatal for you know like years before you come off the pill because you're depleting a lot of things as you're on there um really? so I would think about that kind of stuff first really I didn't even know about the prenatal like I did such, like I just woke up one morning and I was like well I'm studying nutrition and doing all that stuff why is this thing in my arm like why is yeah. this? and I just like went to the doctor the next day not prepping my body at all just took it out it's been a mess ever since. Like, well, that's what I did. I just didn't think, I just thought if I stopped taking this, I'll be fine. I didn't yeah. know that, you know, my brain's not communicating with my ovaries. I'm not actually producing any hormones. And I just didn't know that it would take, it can take time to kind of reconnect those two things. Yeah. And, and I think a big turnoff for people that are wanting to come off is that your are like, say you went on it, like you said, for your skin, right? Like, or and then your skin starts to flare up and the only kind of thing that they ever offer you again is like, well, I'll just get back on the pill. And you're like, oh, that's what got me in this mess in the first place. Like I went for, <laughs> um, cause it went, it went two and a half years without getting my period. And finally they're like, well, you should probably get back on the pill. And I was like, explain the logic, please. Yeah. How, how does that even make sense? They're like, well, then you would get a bleed. I'm like, but that's not a real bleed. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So how did like, for people that, how can they prep themselves, I guess, mentally for something like that and following this nutrient like diet and looking and all that kind of stuff, will that also help offset or should they just mentally prepare for whatever symptom they went on for to be a little bit worse? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would also can take into consideration your age. Cause a lot of like, I went on the pill when I was very young and I like my skin did freak out after, but I think it was much more like liver and gut health related versus mm -hmm. hormone, you know? So if you are like, I have a lot of clients, that they'll have like a lot of period issues or irregular cycles when they're first take the pill. But if when you're before your frontal cortex is formed, your cycle's gonna be erratic. It, it's normal for your cycle not to quite be consistent or he be heavy sometimes or not heavy other times when you're younger. So I would also say like it might not be that bad now, you know, because a lot of times our hormones will balance out and our cycles get better as we get older. Um, and then if you're much healthier now, like most of us are much more cognizant. Like if you're even thinking of transitioning off the pill, you're probably eating decently well. Um, I would say the biggest thing you want to do is support your liver. Like you could do liquid chlorophyll, super simple. Like you could add that to water if you want. You could mix it with like lemon water or whatever. Um, that's going to support your liver. Castor oil packs, like those are great. Um, things that are going to support your liver. Cause when you're coming off, your liver is working like double time trying to get rid of all those excess hormones. Cause now you're making your own hormones and you have to process out all the hormones left over from the pill. So that's really helpful. And then minimizing your stress because it is, it is a, a stressful on your body. The pill is stressful every day. When you take it, you're taking a little dose of hormones every single day. So you're getting a little cortisol response. So it's more of like a low chronic inflammation so when you come off like there's going to be an impact so I always tell 
clients, I'm like, try to plan this, right? Do not come off the pill when you have like a crazy week or month at work or season or whatever. Um, try to be mindful of that and like work out a little bit less. Maybe those couple weeks, get more sleep, make sure you've prepped your food, you know, trying to be mindful of those things. I think that can really help, but it's usually not right away. It's usually like three to six months down the road that women will start to notice symptoms. And that's because they, they're still catching up hormone wise. Yeah, because isn't it that the cycle, the egg is what, like three months? So if you do have like some kind of hiccup in your hormones, you have to revert back. Am I saying that right? Like the three months prior to that? Yeah, I mean, the last 100 days impacts your current cycle. So, yeah. So it, it, (laughs) and that's the other, that's what makes hormones so like frustrating though for so many people because they're like, wait a second. I just did all this stuff for like two whole months and not that much has changed. And I'm like, yeah, but in two more months, like you could feel like a different person. So it, they take longer. Your hormones are the last thing to change. I'm sure you know this, like when you're working on gut health and stuff that can definitely take time, but often like you'll start seeing changes and then you'll see positive changes in like your digestion and your bowel movements and then your hormones, you know? A hundred percent. I mean, that's what, so my like whole past journey is like, um, IBS, but because of IBS, I was so undernourished and all that kind of stuff. And so now even my hormones, like it came back for like five months and then I went missing again and it hasn't come back. And I'm just like, oh, okay, like what's going on and trying to like think back to that. But at the same time, it just, it's so tricky. Like gut health, totally fine. No more IBS, none of that stuff anymore. And then you're just like, what the heck is going on? Like, <laughs> But it really is. So kind of, I want to touch more on the like gut hormone connection. You spoke a bit on what, uh, what does birth control do for or to the gut? It can create an imbalance in the good bacteria and bad bacteria. So whenever there's a shift in our gut environment, it's going to change what bacteria can thrive. And so that's kind of the important thing to remember. It's like, it's and some people don't notice like any gut changes with the pill. Um, you can definitely not have gut symptoms and still have gut issues though. Uh, and if you don't have a bowel movement every day, then that's, that's, I consider like a gut symptom. So it can change the balance of the beneficial bacteria and just deplete them a little bit, which I mean, think about like women that use the pill for like PCOS, they already usually have depleted beneficial bacteria. So then it's like double that negative effect. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the main impact on the actual bacteria And then, of course, like, since it's a little bit stressful, um, that stress, obviously, that's going to impact how we digest our food. Maybe you don't break it down all the way. That's going to impact gut health. And then that last kind of main area is really um, more of our liver, right? Our liver is so important for digestion. And if we are also processing these extra hormones, and it is a prescription medication that you're taking on a daily basis, it's a little bit extra work for your liver. And the last thing... Sorry, I know I said three. Iron. A lo- the pill has a ton of iron. Can we talk about this? It's like drives me crazy because iron's very inflammatory. And a lot of my clients that have excess iron have issues with that. They have a ton of gut issues. And they, they're they like having such a hard time getting rid of that chronic inflammation. And I'm like, well, you take a pill every single day that has some of them have up to 75 milligrams of iron. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's insane. <laughs> They should put it on the label. It's just wrong. It's just, yeah. I just hate it. And that would mean, like, the backup. And it, that makes sense then. Oh, yeah. okay. Blowing my mind here. So what does someone do? Like, what would you, like, vitamin E or something to offset that? Yeah, vitamin E is really helpful. And you just have to make sure that you eat enough copper-rich foods. Yeah. Because, and it's tricky because a lot, I get a lot of women that take the pill that get, excess copper like their copper gets displaced and it looks really high on their test but it's not available for use and copper is antifungal anti-mold antibacterial so that will mess up your gut health right because it's not doing all those jobs that it's supposed to so i always say like even though people are nervous that they're going to have too much copper with the pill i'm like you need food forms of copper because then those are ones that you can actually use and if you have copper helps you regulate iron so I would say, like, make sure, like, the beef liver, that kind of stuff, oysters, shrimp, shellfish, that, all that stuff, bee pollen. All the good things. So how yeah. do you feel about a plant-based diet then? 
I do not recommend plant-based diets. Did you see my post yesterday, all those comments yeah. on it? Yeah, I um, <laughs> I just can't argue with people on the internet anymore. Um, I mean, here's the thing. I get a lot of clients with that are on plant-based. And I will, I'll say vegan because I think plant-based is very misleading because I think I eat plant-based. I eat a lot of plants, but I also eat a lot of animal foods. So I think plant-based is like, this like weird word that they try to make like sell like a vegan diet but I get a lot of clients that are vegan and we slowly start incorporating animal foods and it's like night and day and not everyone eats every food some people will just eat like eggs and dairy some people will do like eggs and like bone broth gelatin liver that kind of stuff so it's different for everyone but plant-based diets are not good for your digestion I don't like that woman was arguing with me I'm like plants are so hard to break down like we're like plants can kill us like if we were just out in nature like we're probably gonna die from plants rather than animal so yeah it's just I I don't recommend them I just think they deplete the body they give your digestion a lot of extra work to do and most of us are stressed under eating and our metabolisms are slower and sluggish anyway so our digestion is already slower so then you add in all these difficult to digest foods and it's just way more work for your gut. 100%. That's I, the girlies in my tribe, I'm like, guys, like, I know you want to be. And it's always the question I get asked before they get on. They're like, is this vegan? I was like, I'm going to slowly try mm-hmm. to make you not vegan. But yeah, sure. Because like, that was the one thing that happened to me. It was like, I literally tried everything with my hormones. Every friggin' thing, every health, whatever, chased it all. And then finally one day I was like, I'm craving a steak. Because I'd been a vegan for, or I'd been vegan for four years and then vegetarian for like wow. 10 years and I was just like oh like I and I don't even know how to cook a stick like I don't know what this is <laughs> <laughs> no, to cook it. that's so crazy and I was like I don't even know like how and so thankfully here in Thailand like you can go to the grocery store and they literally cook it for you right there and then you can just like eat it and it's very interesting but so I went and I was like facetiming my dad and I was like dad like what kind of steak do I even buy like I don't even know what this <laughs> is but it, <laughs> you do have to like listen to the body and it was just like the then bone broth came in and then doing the beef liver and then doing all that kind of stuff and that's what gave you like it gave me my sex drive back my hair stopped falling out my that horrible skin flare up all that kind of stuff but for so long we want to label stuff as a diet because we're like oh no everyone says like you should be plant-based and you said it so perfectly it's like yeah you should eat plants totally you should eat animals too like I don't I don't know veganism I'm just like I get it it works for some people but it's usually because you're starving out something else when you first make that initial shift like I, that's the yeah. biggest thing I say like talk, talk to that person in eight years that's what mm. I say because like if you <laughs> look back right like you probably felt amazing at first right and like so a lot of people will see their skin clear up at first and then everything like four years down the road it, it all goes downhill and if you look like big vegan bloggers big vegan Instagram accounts eventually they convert and there's a reason why every time they switch it's always to, like they'll start being like oh no I've had some eggs I've had this and then all of a sudden it's like I'm carnivore yeah <laughs> <Okay>. yeah <laughs> so funny I love it I also love like the shifts I'm seeing right now I think like post-covid everyone is chatting about carbs again and how we need to add them in like hormonally and that's mm-hmm. been a big thing I've noticed because everyone was so deep in keto pre-corona which is interesting and then while we're all in it and we're all stockpiling on pasta everyone's like oh wait I feel really good again like what <laughs> is <laughs> Or everyone's making sourdough, right? Yeah, everyone's learned how to make. Like, oh, what's this? I did it too. I'm not gonna lie, I did it too. <laughs> My stepmom's like, oh, I just I finally got the sourdough starter because apparently it was all sold out in America. And she's like, I finally got it. <laughs> so <Okay>. funny. <laughs> it is, I mean, it is important, but I will say like, and that's why I did my protein post because I do talk about carbs a lot because I just get so many women that are like, I'm cutting my carbs, I'm trying to reduce my carbs, they're terrified of carbs. And I was too, for a while. Um, And but luckily, I was an athlete. So I could never be that scared. Otherwise, you just can't perform. But um, I talked about protein, because I'm like, if you don't pair them with protein, they're just not quite as beneficial. And especially if you have if you suspect hormone imbalances, like it's probably not going to be super great for that. But yeah, they're, they're definitely important. It's just kind of keeping it all in context. Yeah. I mean, it's not going overboard on one thing, but really, I think protein is the major one. That's why, like, I can't go with plant-based diet. I'm like, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. You need protein and, like, the beans and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, well, my gut really 
immediately flares up when I'm eating all these beans. I'm like, listen to your body. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you asking me these questions? Your body is literally speaking to you. I think it's but the like people get attached though, especially like okay. I have a lot of people that have ethical concerns and environmental concerns. And I'm like, follow sustainable dish and you will never have another environmental concern because I mean, you can't deny the science and the research and the statistics around like regenerative farming. And I know that's not how everything is, but the whole point is that if we don't start talking about this more and demand better, that it's like, that's how it's going to change. And like plant-based does not mean better for the environment. So it's just, it, it's a tricky, it's a touchy subject. And that's why I always try to like approach it with compassion with people. And I'm like, listen, it just, you need to research more. We can never stop learning and experimenting. And if, if your body is saying that it wants it, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's taking away demons, demonizing, it's not demonizing it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a really good book. Oh, it's in my kitchen. It's called The Virtues of the Kitchen Table. Oh, I that it's, one. So it's basically when I was vegan, I was like, I like to read things that challenge my own beliefs because I'm just like, teach me something I don't know. And basically teaches you how, even though if you are plant-based and stuff, you're not, you can be eating stuff like from Australia or you're doing all these stuff and like how to, how it flies in and actually the green gases are way worse, obviously, yeah. than eating that cow or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then what it does to your body and all this kind of stuff. It's a good book. Very cool. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, I want to talk about um, reintroduction because I know a lot of, like, as we're talking on, like, okay, so maybe my body is craving a steak or something like that, but I'm kind of, I don't think I can tolerate it. Um, I saw one of your posts about dairy and stuff, and mm -hmm. that's what sparked my interest um, because that's what I work with my girls on is too, is that, like, this whole, like, striking out low FODMAPs and taking out all this food. They're like, I need to do this to heal my gut, and I'm like, mm no, that's actually making it worse. I'm like, yeah. you're, like, you're not supposed to have symptoms and all this kind of stuff. And I was reading about that. So if you wanted to, or if you could dive a little bit deeper into that. Yeah. And so like any, if you're someone that is going from a vegan diet or very limited animal foods, the first thing you want to think of is, can, do I have the digestive capacity to like break down these foods? Cause a lot of the times we get these GI issues from plant-based eating because we aren't making enough stomach acid anymore, right? So if we don't make enough stomach acid, then of course you're not going to break down that steak well or that dairy well or anything that has that animal protein in it. And so usually I try to get people to use something like digestive bitters to help them transition. Um, it stimulates your own digestive process, right? It helps you make stomach acid, helps you make bile, which is super important. So it's great for your liver and gets your pancreas to make enzymes. So a lot of people will use digestive enzymes. I don't really like them, to be honest. I just find that long-term, it doesn't improve things as much as like using bitters. It's like stimulating your own process. So use those before you eat that meal and then see how you do it. And it's always like, just like with, with dairy, I feel like it's a little different where I'm like, start really small. Because if it's, a, if it's a lactose issue, like if you just don't digest the carbohydrate in dairy, if you slowly have like a tablespoon a day, until you get to your desired amount without symptoms, then like that's really how you're gonna build up that lactase enzyme to help get rid of that issue. With me, I think it's a lot easier. As long as you're using the bitters and having those before your meals, eventually you won't need them anymore. But that's just kind of like, you know, if you don't wanna feel like it's sitting in your stomach and you're not digesting it, um, it, it's not as difficult. And I find honestly, most people already feel better. Like usually mo most of my clients will start with eggs and it's so it's like this strange like middle ground food I feel like for people and so and they don't have any issues but if they go for something like red meat then they'll use the bitters so it's just experimenting and relaxing before you eat it's amazing what happens when we relax and chew our food and don't we're not super distracted it's like you will break down that food so much better if you're just eating the food 100 percent I mean, the digestive enzymes don't even get rubbed up and like the mucus layer around your gut. You're like, just chill. Like your yeah. body wanted the food. Give yourself radical permission to enjoy that food and experiment. Like at the end of the day, you, your body will let you know if it likes it or not. And if you have more energy, if you have better focus, if you feel more in control of your moods, that's your body being like, okay, I liked that. Without like this preconceived notion of like, no, we have to be vegan and we have to do all this kind of stuff. It's just like, 
maybe you do like dairy, maybe cheese actually works for you, maybe, you know, but you don't know until you give yourself enough time to turn off your thinking brain and actually listen to your body. And it's, it's like, hard too. There's so many, there's so many people telling you what to eat. <laughs> so hard. That's the thing though. Like, I mean, I'm sure you've been in that rat race before where you're just like, well, I'm doing all that healthy things and you forget to trust your body. Like mm -hmm. you're doing all the right things, you're chasing Whole30, you're doing paleo, you're doing vegan, low carb, slow carb, whatever. But like your body is literally telling you like, hey mate, this is not working for me. Like I know it says in the book that it's working, but like we're not gonna work. And someone actually wrote in here um, earlier is that like, why are hormones the longest to heal? Do you think? Cause I think that was the biggest thing is like you can heal, like your skin will start clearing up, your hair and like, all that kind of stuff, but why is it that hormones are usually the last leg of everything? Well, if you think about how, like, a follicle, it takes 100 days, like, they basically will, can develop over 100 days, and so if the one follicle that is, ends up being chosen to release the egg and have you ovulate and have that, have your period, that cycle, if, it, if that's impacted over the last 100 days, then that how much time can impact the symptoms that you have on your current cycle and so it's just hormones are not as quick it's like think about it like if we even just like one full cycle like around 30 ish days for most women i mean that's like a whole month that you're having this transition so if you're starting to make changes and improve things and i will say like some people do notice things right away but whenever people don't i'm like we have to remember that it takes time for this stuff to change. Also stress, I mean, stress is the root of all imbalance in the body. It slows our metabolism, metabolism slows down, everything slows down, digestion, detoxification, hormone production. So it's one of those things where it's like, if you are having like a super stressful time over a short period and then it's better and then it's stressful, like it all goes up and down. So it's definitely gonna impact where you're currently at, but there's just so many things at play, um, even like thyroid health and stuff, we go down that rabbit hole, but all those things impact that 100 days. So it just kind of makes sense that like, okay, if it takes 100 days to develop that follicle, then it's going to all kind of, it could go up or down for that whole time. Yeah, that makes total sense. And something I notice a lot is that when, because we use like a gut tracker and stuff like that, and some of the girlies will notice that like, okay, we had this three months ago and I was super stressed there and now my period is horrendous. And they'll start to see kind of stuff right um, in that kind of cycle as opposed to just being like, they have it this this month and like, oh yeah, I don't know what's wrong. Like this month was fine. I was on holiday, da, 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 da. But if they actually look back to yeah. like 90 days, they're like, oh yeah, that was a really horrible time at work. Like I was prepping for this holiday so I had a lot more work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what if someone is having really bad periods? Um, what do you kind of start them out with? What are some things they can start doing to find a little bit of relief? So, I mean, vitamin E is basically a miracle. Um, so I would <laughs> say like, that's a really easy thing that you can do. But you want to think about like, so if, if compensation and stress, I like to call stress compensation because a lot of us think of like outside stressors as our stress, but it's really, it, what really matters is how your body reacts to the stress. So if, if our bodies are compensating and trying to keep us safe and deal with what's going on in our day to day, you want to think of what causes that. Like, I think nutrition is such an easy way to minimize stress. I mean, think about it, your stress that increases your demand for glucose, carbohydrates for the body. And so if you're not, if you're also low carb, then boom, there's even more stress. So looking at what you're eating, you know, and eating consistently, eating breakfast in the morning, that'd be great, right? If we all did that. Um, and just like, not making your body guess, like if it's going to get food, if you're going to nourish it. Um, I think that's a really good place to start. And then from there, it's thinking about like, if you feel like you have all those things in line, maybe it is like a deeper gut issue. And I would, that's when I would really start paying attention to how you eat, how you eat, where you eat, that sort of thing. That's like step number one, you know, that can alone help get rid of like bloating and indigestion. Um, and then just looking at like, do you get enough sleep? What's your light exposure? Like there's so many things in our day to day, but I do personally think that starting with food is the most important because if we think of, you know, blood sugar imbalance and 
carbohydrates and protein and all the building blocks we need to make hormones, all that's coming from our food. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of it, right? Because that's something we can control. Like we get to make that choice, hopefully three times a day, if you're not, yeah. <laughs> plus, plus snacks. Yeah. Like, but it really is getting on to a system and not helping making your body guess. And I think like, this silly, like intermittent fasting or all these kind of things is just when in reality, you're not actually in that eight hour period. I often see a lot of people, they're like, no, I'm eating at these times, but they're actually eating, they're snacking more. So you're not even giving your digestion a break through that. And that stress on the body too. So if you actually have these four to six, a lot of times that you're eating throughout the day, they're like, no, that's too much on your digestion. They'll try and argue that fact. And I'm like, yep. no, actually you're giving yourself three to four hours, which is what you need for the mitigated function to come through yeah, to actually yeah. heal. But like mostly, I mean, like working with women, it is just learning for your body to trust you again, to not mm -hmm. be in this fight or flight state of mind. And someone just asks like, okay, so what about with no periods? It's kind of the same thing, right? Like, if, I mean, like if someone has like hypothalamic amenorrhea. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's when you really need to focus on food. And if if you are not getting a period, that means that your body doesn't feel safe enough to have a baby. So it's like, and the first thing I think of is undernourished. And so that could mean that you're not eating enough or that you're over exercising or that you did that for a really long time. And that led to some thyroid issues. And now you're still not getting your period. Um, but that's when you really want to look at compensation. That's when I would absolutely, I'd be making sure I was eating every three hours and never letting myself get hungry. Um, at least trying not to looking at how I'm living. How am I stressed? Like, do I, am I always in this like fight or flight state? Do I sleep well? Um, you know, underlying gut issues can definitely be a problem with that, but I would focus so much more on like, Am I meeting my nutrient needs and getting really honest with that um, and exercise and that kind of stuff? And it, it's not the case for everyone. I do get some women that have hypothalamic amenorrhea and they're not under eating or over exercising, but they have a history of it. And so it, it can take time, but the more consistent that you are and the, the more you can just like try to enjoy your life, enjoy your food um, and get enough sleep, that kind of stuff. I think that there's nothing more important than that. Oh, overall, that's me. Like, I look at it now because you can get so mad at hormones, right? And you're just like, I, my body is waiting to catch up to where I am now from where I was for the last 10 years. Yeah. And it is that it's hard, too, because, like, looking in the mirror, you obviously, have, you gain weight. You have to learn to trust yourself. You have to get into these schedules. And you have to tr retrain yourself to be hungry, not only, yeah. like, for food, but for life to get out of this fight or flight state of mind. So it mm -hmm. really is, it's a mental game and a physical one, but when your body does learn to trust, maybe you don't get your period right away, but you start to see signs like your hair stops falling out, your skin flares up, you have a sex drive again, like all yeah. those kind of things. You're like, okay, I'm on the right path. Like it'll yeah. come eventually. Like, but it is, it's, it's crazy what the body does. Someone actually just asked, what if you're, what if you're getting your period two to three times a month? Okay. So that's not all a period though. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot of spotting involved and definitely no ovulation, right? So I, I equate a lot of this stuff back to thyroid function. If you have an underactive thyroid, you often will get your period less frequently. Overactive, you can get it more frequently and have really short cycles and not ovulate. Um, I would look into like, how is your thyroid health? And then is it a real period or is that spotting? Because you could have spotting during ovulation um, and then have spotting before your period. And it looks like three periods, but it might not be. So and, like the fact that there were just three different questions on three different types of period in a matter of five minutes, like yeah. that's how insane the female, like, the hormonal yeah. system is. Everyone is so different. So cool. Like, but that's, I think it can be scary at first when you first start to learn about it. Like it's overwhelming, like deer in headlights kind of thing. But when you actually realize like, oh, I can control my body, not like control, but I can work with it so that it works with me. And I just have this freedom and this energy and all that kind of stuff. It's actually really friggin' empowering. Yeah. Like, do you feel that way now that you are kind of in flow and running on that kind of steam? 
I definitely do. And it's something that I still am always trying to like hone in on is where am I in my cycle? you know, I really try to take it easy during my period and not overdo things. And when I, when I'm like follicular phase ovulation and I have way more energy, I I'm like, okay, I'm going to have longer days and I'm, I'm cool with it. I'll, you know, book a vacation that maybe we're going to be super active or something during this time. I'm doing a launch right now. I'm, I'm going to be ovulating at the end of this week. So it was like perfect time for that. Um, I do try to plan that stuff around it because it's when you do, when you work with your cycle versus against it, life is a lot better. <laughs> so true. Um, I was reading, um, Lisa Mitty's book. Um, and it was like my, yeah, it was my like Bible for so long. And after realizing just like, cause you can feel it more with your body, right? When you're going through these fluctuations of cycle and you're just like, I had so much freaking energy last week. What happened? And then you're yeah. getting so mad at yourself. And you're like, what's wrong with my brain? Like I was writing programs. I was doing all this stuff last week. Like, what's wrong? And then you're like, oh, hormones, I get you. And so can you, Tell me more about that, like the four phases. What is that? So if people don't actually know about hormones, what are they and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so there's a kind of four major shifts that happen in your monthly cycle. So first is your menstrual phase, right? That's when you're actually having your period. Our hormones are lowest during this time. It's a very low energy state. Your body is shedding a layer. It's doing a lot of work. So that's what I try to get people to keep in mind. And it's you're losing things, so you need to nourish, right? Um, so trying to get as much sleep as you can, relax if you can, um, and make some space for yourself is important. And then at the, once our period ends, we're building up estrogen and getting that follicle ready to release the egg. And so usually people are getting their energy back. Um, it's a good time to like hit it hard in the gym. If you're feeling good, this can also be a hard time for some people. If you don't process estrogen well, or if you make a lot of estrogen, then you can be dealing with acne, digestive issues, just not feeling as well. It takes a long time for your energy to come back after your period. Um, so that could kind of be like some signs that things are a little bit out of whack. And then once your estrogen peaks right before ovulation, then that follicle releases the egg. And that's when you get your boost in progesterone. So that's kind of like follicular phase, then you ovulate. It's like a two to three day kind of time period where your hormones are making that shift. And then after ovulation, it's the luteal phase. This is like the most, I don't know, not like inconsistent, but it's like, it's different from all the other phases. Cause it starts off, it's like, you're, you're at the end of ovulation, you're feeling good. You still have energy. And then like halfway through, you're like, okay, so I'm starting to, you know, need a little bit more rest, which is fine. Your body is making way more hormones because your estrogen peaks before ovulation and then it goes down, but it comes back up. And then, so you have high estrogen, high progesterone, these are good things. It's just that it does take more work for your body and your body temperature is higher. So you don't quite recover as well. Um, so it's a time to just, I would not kill yourself in the gym. I prioritize more sleep. I just like change my morning routine, like the week before my period. I'm just like, okay, I'm feeling more fatigued. So I'm going to give myself more sleep. Um, and I know that about myself. And ever since I've done that, I'm like, I don't hate this time anymore. It's it's crazy how a little simple change like that can make a big difference. That's awesome though. Like that self intuition of just like I'm just gonna make this tiny little tweak. It's not gonna do anything to my day, really. Yeah. Getting more sleep. That's awesome. So someone asked, is it normal to eat more during your period then? Um, I would say yeah. I mean, the time leading up to your period, because your body temperature is higher because you have more progesterone you actually have a higher metabolism. So you are burning more calories the days leading up to your period. Um, I just think it's more of like, if you want to eat more during your period, my question is, are you eating enough all the other times? That's fair. That's exactly what I was saying. I was like, but what about the other months? Yeah. And it's hard, like, I've noticed um, it's more just like root veggies and things that are kind of more hearty during that time, I guess, carbs. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff is to help give energy. I've noticed that has helped me a bit. Um, what was my other questions? Yeah, what are some foods to eat during? That's what I wanted to ask. Um, during during those phases, yeah. So I mean, honestly, like there's books and stuff that talk about um, eating for different phases. To me, that feels really overwhelming. So that's not how I teach to my clients um, or the women's the women inside my courses but I usually say like you should 
you shouldn't really change how you're eating at any of those times. Um, but I will say if you are someone that feels like you have some excess estrogen, like you've got the skin issues, um, maybe flaring up before or after your period or during, um, or maybe you have lots of like some women will get very loose stools, right? They'll have like that inflammatory response. You could definitely use some carrots, broccoli sprouts, vitamin E, things that are going to help process that estrogen. I do think timing that around that time could be helpful, but I think those things all the time can also be good. Um, if you don't eat a lot of red meat, like please eat red meat during your period because you're, you're losing so many minerals. You need to replenish that. Um, and then leading up to your period, I would say that's a good time. Like maybe you do some more dandelion root tea if you have a lot of bloating or you could do like liquid chlorophyll, castor oil packs, things that are going to be a little bit of extra support for your liver. Um, I think those can be helpful. Love on that liver. For sure. Someone asked, any good supplements for hypothalamus? <laughs> 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 I can never pronounce it. H -M. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, I would, I would say focusing way more on food, you know, and just eating enough. But if you're worried about nutrient deficiencies, I mean, a good beef liver supplement every day. I mean, that's such a good way to replenish nutrients. Paleo Valley has a great one. Ancestral Supplements has a great one. So I, I would do that. Yeah. And like organ meats, like eating yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you recommend anything if I can't afford hiring you? I've read all these Sophie's books and period has improved, but still so off. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do have cheaper ways to work with me. So I have a course, Nutrition Strategies for Better Periods. It's 197. I mean, that's definitely the cheapest okay. way. And then I also have a group program that I'm launching literally today. It, and it rolled out. Um, and that's, it's only 997 and it's four months and you get to do hair testing with me. It's really, really cool. It's never going to be this cheap ever again. Um, but I wanted to like offer it for all the women that have been want to do one-on-one, -on -one, but they can't. So that is an option. There is a payment plan. You could definitely do that. Um, and I do have results reviews options on like, if you just wanted to do like a hair test, that's where I tell most people to start for their hormones, like do a mineral test because you want to see where your stress is at, you get to see like what stage of stress you're in, where your deficiencies are, where the imbalances are. Um, so you can technically do that. That's pretty cheap as well. So there are options, but it's, I mean, if you go into my Instagram and read and apply, I mean, you probably wouldn't it's even need to work with me. So much information. But that's like the end of the day, it's just doing your own research and listening to your body. But like, yeah. You have so many freaking resources. That's like when I started kids, I was like, oh my goodness, yes. Like your courses and everything too. So good. So good. Um, someone said, so vitamin E is good for period pains. It is. It's a really powerful antioxidant and it helps oppose estrogen. So like if you're, if you likely have excess estrogen and not enough progesterone, vitamin E can be super helpful it's also a very safe supplement, right? There are so many supplements out there and I get emails and messages every single day asking me to like, Oh, we want to partner with you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I just no. like there's no, <laughs> there's no supplement that's going to really change someone's life. But a vitamin E organ meats, like I do think that those can be really helpful. Um, so I mean, I would say yes, but it's not going to solve all your problems if you're not working on it from a nutrition standpoint. Oh, like that point, like the last sentence there is just like, I think so many people are looking for supplements. They're looking for that quick fix of like, I'll just take some like milk thistle and some, I don't know, like other things. And like, it'll be fine. I'm fine. I'm going to pop a probiotic. We're all good. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm like, that's not how it works. Like, please look at like the whole sound nutritional body and like most importantly look at stress levels look at are you even if you are consuming certain foods and your body isn't actually metabolizing them look at your stress because you're, you can't absorb that stuff even if you're eating the quote-unquote right diet if you're not taking care of what that cortisol level, what your cortisol levels are doing you're not actually taking that in which i see so many people struggling with 
also, can we just talk about how people are willing to spend a lot of money on supplements? Yes. But when they, but then they want, they want to work with me and they're like, oh, it's too much. I'm like, but you've probably spent at least that much in the last year on supplements. So, oh, yeah. you know, just keep that in mind. Be smart with your money. Do not waste it on something that even like I did that. I couldn't afford to work with someone for a very long time. Um, and then, it, and I wasted my money anyway, but it was a good investment and I still learned a lot. And so it, I was like, I'm going to, you know, be careful with what I'm spending on different things, only get the essentials and not, you know, go on a little information diet. I, I make my clients do that. I'm like, stop taking in so much information because you're second guessing the process. You're spending money on stuff that you don't need. So that might be helpful too. Same. I did a like little Facebook or Instagram story the other day where I like went through my entire cabinet. I don't know why I still have them, but like all of the supplements I've ever bought. And I was like, I was so hesitant about investing in different coaches or naturopaths or any of that stuff. And I'm like, this cabinet alone is a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. And we spend so much time because I, I mean, personally, like, I think it's because it's scary to do the work. It's scary to take responsibility of like, oh, now I have to change. Now I have to yeah. look in the mirror and take responsibility. And we don't want to do that. And I'm not saying the person that asked the question about vitamin E, that's your case, but it is. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's, that's the, that's the scariest part. Like we know, we can go on Google. There is a plethora of information everywhere, but it's like, when are you actually ready to take that next step? Because when you make the investment in yourself, that's when the rest of it changes. But that's the scariest step. Yeah, know? for sure. That's a really great so point. It's so nice that you have different pillars. Like you have, okay, here's the course. You can start learning there and then you can kind of level up. I think that's a beautiful structure of helping people wherever you're at in your journey. How Not like financially, yeah, maybe you don't have the biggest investment that you can do, but like where can you also look at your life? Where are you overspending in some areas? Like, I don't know, eating out every day, doing like, I don't know, drinking maybe because you're so stressed or all that kind of stuff. Where can you take back a little bit of money there and start building up and starting with, okay, maybe it's just doing the hair follicle test or maybe it's just doing um, the course and then working way up into like the main programs. But it is, I think that's a, that's a really good point. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't know, tangent. Um, and I was like, side tangent, sorry. <laughs> no, so, I just don't think it's great. I think it's great. Like when people act, like when people make the investment, even showing up here and like watching this, like that's taking time. Like it's the yeah. one thing we can never get back that resource is time. People showing up to learn, like that's freaking powerful. And I think people should really celebrate that of just listening to us ramble for the last hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, are there any last things that you wanted to cover? Um, I would just say, like, kind of going again on the information diet thing, like, there's a lot of conflicting information out there, especially when it comes to hormones, because hormones are very trendy now. So just like, just because someone I mean, yes, I have a medical license, and I've done a lot of research, like, I think that helps. There's plenty of people, other dietitians that I would never recommend for kind of what they teach. So it doesn't always mean that they're like, perfect for you. But just remembering not every piece of information out there is meant for you and that it's always important to do your own research. Um, and if someone, like if you look at someone and it, some things are saying feel like surface level, like symptom level, you know, that's when you really want to take a deeper look of like, if someone's not talking about how your body works, how hormone imbalances start in the first place and just focusing so much on little things to do for symptoms, that's like a big red flag. So look at who you're following Go on an information diet, put your blinders on. And honestly, there's so much you can learn just online from people. And if you start implementing and experimenting, that's where I would say, like, start from there, see how your body responds. And if you need more help, like there's plenty of resources out there. I love that. I think that's so valuable. Just like detoxing what you're listening to, like pick one mentor. And then I mean, do your research prior, but like pick one mentor and then do that, like follow one plan as opposed to doing so many, because then it's, it's going to be one too much. You don't even know what is working. Yeah. And then you're just, you're wasting your time at the end of the day. And that's the one thing that we have in this world. So really picking something that aligns and there's just so many health gurus out there now. I don't know. Like I go, I go on and I'm like, I just can't, like, I can't do Instagram anymore. <laughs> like, I know. I know. Or it's like specifically TikTok. Every time I look at like anything on there where they're like, this is what I eat in a day. I'm like, that was maybe one calorie. 
Like, I think it was oh, one Oh, gosh. I don't like, have TikTok. I, I'm, oh. I think I'm too old for TikTok. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't have it. They do it in the little search bar on Instagram. Or, oh. And, like, it just comes up because, like, following nutrition, it's like, what I eat in a day. And I'll, like, click on it. And then, of course, you get stuck with 8,000 of them. And I'm like, I'm still hungry looking at all your snacks. Like, that was <laughs> just a snack. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, so I always end this with asking people three questions and then you can tell people how to get in touch with you and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you, well, how would you describe happy? Like what is happy to you? Oh, I think happy now at this point in my life is just like feeling peaceful and not moving or thinking or doing anything and just like giving myself like white space. Just that's, that's happy. Oh, that is bliss. <laughs> that is such a bliss point. Um, what are three words of advice you would give to your younger self? Um, three words of advice? Mm -hmm. uh, just trust yourself. <laughs> trust yourself every day and stop taking in outside information. <laughs> so good. And then what is one word you would use to describe how you currently are right now? I would say hmm oh my gosh it's eight just so everyone knows it's only it's almost 9 p.m my time so <laughs> my brain's a little fried after client calls all day but I would say explorative I think I'm like self-explorative lately oh I Just digging in that. more, you know, trying to take less outside information and focusing more on like what I do every single day and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I feel like that's something that quarantine could have brought for a lot of people. It's just like, yeah. Ooh, what's happening inside my body? In my, brain. <laughs> my brain specifically. Um, well, thank you for coming on. Where can people get in more touch with you? I'll learn more about you. I know you mentioned your courses and programs and stuff. So yeah, so my Instagram is where I'm most active at Hormone Healing RD. Um, my website hormonehealingrd.com that has like my nutrition course on there, how to work with me, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you want to do my group coaching program, it starts the week of September 14th. Sign up closes September 7th, and it's going to be really really fun. I already have five women signed up, and yeah very cool we're gonna get to the bottom of everything get to know each other really well um and have solid support for four months so i would definitely check that out if you're located in the u.s or canada amazing and group programs are just the best you get like cheerleaders and people that are knowing what's like going on with you so yeah I don't know. you feel really isolating when you're on a healing uh, hormone healing yeah. journey or like any healing journey so if you have people that are like oh, i get you i know you yes like Really I also have like the coolest clients. I'm so they're just they're so smart. They're so laid back. They're funny. Like they're just really cool people. So I'm like, it's gonna be a really awesome group of women. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's when you can surround yourself with people that are practical. Like, I don't know, I like being in a group of people that are like, we're doing this, it's super strict, all this kind of stuff. You're like, Oh, no, can't fit in. Yeah. And I think that <laughs> might be like scary things when you first join a group program. But like, yeah, to look at like who you how you talk to people that's obviously who you attract you know yeah yeah for sure all right lovely well thank you so so much and thanks for staying up late and hopefully your move and everything goes smoothly thanks <laughs> thanks for being letting me reschedule and deal with my mess of a move last week but yeah thanks for having me i really enjoyed talking with you you too have a good rest of your night you too bye, <laughs> bye. and then People tuning in, we are continuing this conversation in our private Facebook group called Happy Gut Gang. So head over there and I will chat with you guys soon. Sending you lots of love and see you next Tuesday.